prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for sanctuary pure and holy tried and true with thanksgiving I'll be a living sanctuary for you sanctuary So as we just focus on those words, creating ourselves as a sanctuary, allowing ourselves to be in that space, where all God's energy lives. And so I invite you to just take a few deep breaths. And as you do, just focus on your breathing and your heartbeat and the opportunity to relax your mind don't worry about the storm today. Surround yourself in the bubble of God's good and hold the thought of peace for everyone else. And as I share these words, just take in what is right for you. Today, I focus my attention on the importance of achieving spiritual freedom in my life. As I reflect upon past human experiences, it is easy to see times where my emotional attachments have kept me trapped in patterns that have not been useful in my life. The thoughts I hold about these experiences are often buried deep within me. Even if I'm not consciously aware, such experiences cause me to feel stuck and limited. But that is simply not the reality of spiritual truth. Today, I choose to empower my life by consciously becoming aware of the thoughts that I am holding, gently letting them go so I can experience spiritual freedom. Such freedom is available to me in any given moment and begins with me first embracing the divine spirit of God as the source of all creation and all good. This reservoir of pure and divine energy can fill my soul, provide wisdom, help me to be more loving, and to bring my best self to every day. As I begin to trust this inner strength, I can release my attachments to anything that has become frustrating to me, including the control I try to exercise over my life. Strengthening my spiritual self and acknowledging that I am not limited by the past can set me free. 
I choose freedom now, knowing that with every new experience comes improved awareness. I rest in the silence for a moment and take that in. My faith that God is greater than any worldly circumstance is always the right reminder. With an open mind and heart, I return to this moment in time and invite my highest good in all of my life. And as I do, I experience peace. All right, we're working on that noise you're hearing. Sounds like the storm is breaking in. <laughs> so hang on for just a moment. Uh, do we need to make any adjustments? Okay, thank you. All right, so today we're talking about the power of spiritual freedom. And our focus is on identifying what would it take for us to achieve full spiritual freedom. And the power that comes with that is critical to all of us. So being empowered in our life, we would all agree, is important, right? But unfortunately, we often look outside of ourselves for that empowerment. We wait for something outside of ourselves to happen. We look for a break in our income and a break in our where we're living, a break in our relationships, whatever that may be. But spiritual freedom comes from nothing, nothing but what's inside of us. And if we don't get a grip on what's inside of us, then what happens is that it all comes out in the things that we experience in life, which I'll explain in a little bit. So along life's journey, we have learned to adopt certain behaviors that have helped us manage and cope with our life experiences. Things like dealing with change, change that's expected, change that's unexpected, building relationships, processing emotional pain and suffering. We learned in the beginning of our life, what would it take for us to be able to manage those things? But what's critical and important for us is recognizing that not all of those behaviors have actually worked for us. Some of those behaviors have hurt us or forced us to keep things in. Some of us might have learned to take actions that covered up our pain, for example, by bl placing blame on other people. Sometimes it's easier for us to just blame other people than to self-reflect and say, what do I need to work on in myself so this can be a better path for me? Sometimes we've adopted the practice perhaps of never advocating for ourselves, in which case we became the victim in most of our narratives rather than the victor. And while all growth experiences are going to bring some level of growing pain, the one that hurts us the most is emotional pain. Emotional pain 
prevents us from ever being totally free. Michael Singer helps us to understand this through describing physical versus emotional pain. And he says that physical pain, with physical pain, it's only present while we are dealing with whatever physical ailment it is. Unfortunately, that's not the case with emotional pain. Emotional pain remains a part of our inner self until it is fully released. Emotional pain is ignited by disappointments in life. And we often keep that pain brewing beneath the surface because of our unwillingness to get to the source of that pain. As a result, that hidden pain begins to run our life and the layers of pain begin to build up to where we become overly sensitive to even the smallest occurrences in life. Oh, raise your hand if you've ever experienced that yourself, where the smallest thing triggers a whole lot of tears and upset, and you don't even know what's going on. That's because we don't let the stuff out. We are really, unfortunately, good at stuffing emotional pain. It just gets lower and lower and lower, and it takes a, an act sometimes before it comes out, or it takes the simplest word that someone says to us and impacts us. Michael Singer gives us a couple of examples to think about. And he says, for example, if you're hiding from your pain by maintaining a really busy social life, he said, just somebody not inviting you to an event would be enough to trigger your emotional pain. He also says, what if we invite someone to an event and they say no? If we're hiding a lot of emotion, that one little two-letter two word is going to trigger some level of reaction within us. Even your pet not coming when you call your pet can trigger emotional pain if you've been stuffing it. Now, I know this better than anybody because it took me a long time to really work through all the things that I manifested in my physical life because I didn't deal with them in my emotional state. And if you don't, let it out. And even let those tears out when they come up. This stuff just stays trapped and it manifests in physical ways. While all of these may seem like silly examples for us to be upset, they are merely triggers that are poking at what's beneath those layers. And the more layers we have, the longer it takes for us to let it surface. So we need to really be mindful of what how many times, think about this for a minute, how many times have you thought, I don't know why I feel so down today? I have no, well, there is a good reason. There's something else going on within us that is trying to come out and we're letting it stay there. So with someone, and even though the conversation went well, you're feeling off about it. What really happened? Maybe something they said triggered an old feeling or an old memory. But ultimately, the key is that we have to get in touch with our inner journey, our inner pain, our inner struggle. We cannot begin to enjoy spiritual freedom until all that pain is gone. And Michael Singer wrote this, which I think is really important to hear. He said, to live at this level of spiritual freedom, you must learn not to be afraid of inner pain and inner disturbance. As long as you are afraid of the pain or pretending, for example, that it's not there, you will from it. If you want to be free, simply view inner pain as a temporary shift in your energy flow. There is no reason to fear the experience. 
Now, you might be thinking, well, what is it then beside this emotional pain that can truly set us free? And what can set us free is divine truth, not personal truth. Most of us live by our personal truth. Well, that's what I chaos in our heads, trying to get us riled up. And sometimes we don't know the difference between what starts off as personal truth versus what is divine truth. So I want to talk about that for a little bit. You hear echo? Mm -hmm. yeah. The bus free. Unity co-founders Charles and Myrtle Fillmore fully embraced the belief that each of us was, they taught the importance of seeing God as the source of all good and everything permanent in this world. That's one of our unity principles. God is good and present in everything and everyone. Now, it may not be easy for us to God as attainable, that God energy. And the reason is because most of us grew up in traditional religions that taught us that God was beyond God, the almighty God was beyond a reach. That the person, you know, the gray haired person sitting on the stool in heaven was beyond our reach and we were to be subservient to that energy. But in unity, we believe that that divine energy lives within each of us. And so it's always attainable if you get out of the way. If you stop believing in the circumstances in your life and start focusing on your divine power to change anything you want to change. The Fillmore's taught God as the indescribable reservoir of stored up energy or until we set it into motion through our consciousness. So for people who say, well, I've always thought, well, until you activate that divine energy, it's just present. And it is commanded by what you desire. If you want to, but you can't keep talking about why you're sick. If you want to be happier, you will be happier when you stop talking about why you're unhappy. It's all about the consciousness and the connection between our thoughts and what's happening outside of us. Holding any thoughts or speaking words that oppose the attributes of our divine truth is what happens when we create personal truth. Oh, well, I'll never have this opportunity. I'll always be stuck in this. I've always been unhappy. I've always been alone. All of those affirmations that we all say, and we all do it. We don't even pay attention to how much we do it. But those thoughts negate that divine energy that is within us that gives us the power and our challenges. Creating our own versions of personal truth overshadows the truth and prevents our spiritual freedom and our growth. So if you look back 10 years, are you the same person you were years ago? If the answer is yes, then it's definitely a sign that you have not allowed yourself to grow to the Canaan outward expression of capability and talent. It's capability and consciousness. To be able to solve every problem by simply going within and allowing faith to overcome your doubt. To know and experience divine truth, we must regard the, uh, disregard appearances that are defined by our five senses and seek instead to know and understand the spirit of God from which all things are created in this universe. I have a great story to share with you. It's absolutely true. And you can ask Sean Lee if you don't believe me. 
So on October 17th last year, I received a request from Sean Lee asking for prayers for his grade school friend, Gary Goon. Gary had a long battle with cancer and had survived it, but the cancer had returned. This time in October last year, his diagnosis was stage four inoperable cancer. Now, most of us would spin out of control hearing just that. We'd start planning for the ending, not for the future. Sean provided updates to me. And of course, I put Gary on our prayer list and our chaplain said, and Gary began chemo for this second journey through cancer. October 29th, he attends a wedding reception and our Later that same week, he received positive news on his PET scan. November 1st, new treatment plans and his desire is to rest up for Thanksgiving because he loves inviting people over from the church. May 4th, Gary sent an update after having surgery. Remember, it was inoperable. He had surgery, which was not possible. He acknowledges the need for him to be careful, but he begins envisioning himself playing golf soon. July 31st, 2024, Gary learned from his oncologist, oncologist that he is cancer free. He acknowledges the prayers were answered. He expresses gratitude to everyone and he reminds himself and us that last October, he had stage four inoperable cancer. And his words said, praise the Lord, another miracle has been performed. And again, he expresses gratitude. From my perspective, Gary understood the power of spiritual freedom, the freedom to choose how his consciousness embraced his health challenge. He allowed his faith to be bigger than any circumstance that he experienced through his five senses. He did not allow fear or doubt to enter his mind at any time. And he continued to express gratitude for every single day he lived. He thanked doctors and family members and friends and the people praying for him even those like us that he didn't know. The truth is that whatever is happening in our lives is assessed by our personal filters, which do not typically tell us to look within for the answers. Instead, we rely upon our five senses. And, and if we've been saying that we have this illness and that challenge and this problem, and we continue to verbalize that, we can continue to expect that those things will be visible to us. So I invite you to think like Gary did and start envisioning what you can achieve through the fears and doubt stepping away from all those old beliefs and looking at what is possible. Reverend Teresa Burton wrote, spiritual truth applies to every kind of situation from the most trivial to the most consequential. Like every other attribute of the divine, peace, love, joy, prosperity are all freedoms that are ours, an aspect of our spiritual identity. It is up to each of them and to use it to realize we are always free to choose our thoughts, our stories, our narratives, our lives. Let's review today's lessons. The power of spiritual freedom can change our lives if we're willing to the letter of the law. Number two, to strive towards spiritual awakening, full engagement with spiritual senses, not our five senses, and devotion to that. Number three, to detach from emotional burdens, engaging or avoiding emotions, 
is limiting. And number four, to recognize that freedom is our true nature. Nothing outside of us can stand in the way. The affirmation for today is I am spiritually free. Before I read the quote that Jeffrey will post the lessons for today on our Facebook page. And you can also go to the bulletin that's posted online at unitytampa.org. Now, the quote I have for today is from Thich Nhat Hanh, uh, the famous Buddhist that I just love, everything he writes. He said, letting go gives us the freedom, and freedom is the only condition for happiness. If in our hearts we still cling to anything, anger, anxiety, or possessions, we cannot be free. Let's take that in. So we pause now to reflect upon the gift of spiritual freedom, to know and affirm that beyond our circumstances lies faith, faith in the highest power in this universe, the energy available to all of us, the energy of pure good, and as we continue our spiritual journey, we take time to engage in allowing the full release of all pain and suffering so we can be free from all of what anchors and holds us back. And so it is. Amen. If you have a prayer need today, uh, that you want to share, please go online and submit it so that we can, Linda can collect those and uh, give them to me for tomorrow's prayer list. I also want to ask for prayers for Susan Scaglione with getting her knee to be right and perfect to support her. If you have a desire to support Unity of Tampa. There are many ways you can give. And we say our prosperity prayer every Sunday to remind us how powerful we are and how blessed Unity of Tampa is. We have faith in God as our instant, constant, abundant faith in God to open ways when to the human sense there is no way. We have faith in God to guide us in all our ways and our health, happiness, and prosperity are assured. Thank you, God, for your abundant good now flowing forth to meet our every need. And so it is. I'm going to invite Heather to make a couple of announcements now, and then you're going to get to hear from Elliot again. Hi. Hi guys. Um, so as Reverend Nancy said, we have rated, uh, there will be a special community celebration for that coming soon. So details are coming and pay attention, please. Um, we have a few more scheduled YFM events for the rest of the summer. We've got about a week left before school starts. Um, we have kids movie night this coming Tuesday, 530 in the fellowship hall. Uh, we have our uh, potluck luau has been moved from today. Uh, to next Sunday after church. Uh, so parents and guardians, please be on the lookout in your email for the uh, sign up genius uh, sign up page for the potluck uh, for that. Um, before that, we will be having water day uh, during our regular Sunday school time next week. Uh, so we'll just keep the water play going um, and through the potluck. Our final uh, teen movie night will be in our new clubhouse on Friday the 16th at 7 p.m. And all of these events uh, can be found on the church calendar on the website. So because we are a community of prayer, let's bless our kids now and the caregivers who are staying indoors with them today. Going to join me, Rora? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, come on. <laughs> all right. So we, we rub our hands together, right? We get our energy going. All right. And we envision all those awesome kids and all the grownups at home with them as we sit and watch the rain. And we say... We love you, we bless you, we truly appreciate you, 
and we behold the Christ in you. We love you. We love you. We really, really love you. Mwah. And everyone have a back okay. to you, Nancy. You, Heather. Yeah, Thank you so much, Heather. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Elliot, who's got a song for us. How I could pull this together. I really appreciate Heather and Elliot joining me today so we could make this as special as possible. It's kind of fun. It's, it's kind of fun to do this, something different, right? As you notice, I've put my lights into party mode. <laughs> um, team and I, uh, but I don't want to play his song by myself. It's kind of like a harmonized thing. So I decide I'd just bring you guys a, a special rainy day song. How's that sound? Can you see that it's just raining? There ain't no need to go outside. But maybe you hardly even notice when I tried to show you the song is meant to keep you. Doing just what you're supposed to Waking up too early Maybe we can sleep in Make it banana pancakes Pretend like it's the weekend now We can pretend it all the time Can't you see that it's just raining There ain't no need to go outside But maybe like a ukulele Mama, she made a baby. I really don't mind the practice. Cause you're my little lady. Lady, lady, love me. I love to lay here lazy. But we could close the curtains. Pretend like there's no world outside. But we could pretend it all the time. But can't you see that it's just real? There ain't no need to go outside. Telephone singing, ringing, it's too early, don't pick it up. We don't need to, we got everything we need and everywhere, and all that's enough. Just so easy when the whole world fits inside of your arms. Don't really need to pay attention to the alarms. Wake up slow, ooh, ooh, yeah, wake up slow. to show you the song is meant to keep you from doing just what you're supposed to waking up too early maybe we can sleep in make a banana pancakes pretend like it's the weekend now yeah. we can pretend it all the time we're just raining there ain't no need to go outside Got to wake up slow. All right, Yay, thanks, Elliot, that was fun. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was so fun. All right. Well, how lucky we are, right? Um, I want to thank before I do our closing prayer, I want to thank, hey Elliot, I'm ending on time. I'm going to do the closing prayer. So it's a good thing we weren't in person. We would have been late. Um, <laughs> that's How did right. we manage you know, that? You know, our, uh, our service really ends at 1210. Everybody should just get used to that and stop thinking it's a one hour service. The busier we get, our service. And I need my time with you. So that's the way that goes. Anyway, I just want to say thank you the prayer for protection. If you need anything uh, during the storm, reach out to Jeffrey or I. We'll do our best. I want to thank our Facebook Zoom audience. We've had a lot of people show up today, and I'm really glad because uh, we were working on this until a little after 11 last night, trying to set up and make this work for today. So with all of that said, let's say our prayer for protection the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. 
wherever we are, God is, and all is great. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. I can't wait to see your faces in person next week. Have an amazing week.